All right, this video is lesson eight in our rush through unit eight in Calc BC. Um, if you're in my class in Canandaigua, New York, we are oh, pretty much done for the year. Uh, we are in the middle of a three-week look at infinite series, power series, Taylor series, McLaurin series. Um, and if you're joining us on YouTube, then, well, you're wherever you are in the sequence of clicks you've made. On today's show, we finish our look at Taylor's theorem and the Lagrange error bound. Uh, that'll happen when we get to the classroom. I want to use those as a springboard for talking about what we mean by convergence. And then I want to do a specific test for convergence. Actually, it's a test for divergence. Uh, that's what's coming today. So, um, ooh, no, not yet. Not yet. Boom. See, here's the thing. If the sequence, if the series you're studying, if the series sum of the a sub n's from 0 to infinity is geometric, its interval of convergence is easy to find. Specifically, we find its interval of convergence by setting the absolute value of the common ratio less than 1. That's how we find it. If the series we're studying is not geometric, its interval of convergence is much trickier to pin down. We do know, however, that for all power series, one of three things will happen. One of three things will happen. One. There is a positive number, call it capital R for radius of convergence, such that the series diverges if the absolute value of x minus a is greater than r and converges for absolute value of x minus a less than r, the series may or may not converge if the absolute value of x minus a is r. Um, I'll put it in a simple parlance for you. Simply put, this is the situation where we say the power series converges from this value of x to that value of x. And if your interval of convergence looks like that from a number to a number, then it will diverge outside and it may or may not converge at the endpoints of the interval. That is by far the most common example in calculus problems that we do. Two, it could be that the power series converges for all conceivable values of x. It is completely possible that the power series will converge everywhere on the real number line. We've already looked at some series that do. Sine x, cosine x, e to the x, those all converge from negative infinity to positive infinity. The third option, it isn't a really popular option, is that the series converges only at its center and diverges elsewhere. You're going to have to wait till tomorrow to see an example of how that happens. But it is possible for a power series to converge only at its center. It is never possible, never possible, for a power series to converge for no values of x. And I'll tell you why. 
what are we doing? We're picking some number times x minus a to the n from 0 to infinity. So you get a number plus c1 times x minus a plus c2 times x minus a squared and so on. When you substitute x equals a, you get 0, 0, all those guys are 0. You are going to get a number. The power series has to converge for x equals a. There will always be at least one value of x for which the power series converges. It's just a question of will it converge on an interval that is finite, on an interval that is infinite, or just at the center. Uh, so we're clear. This r, <coughs> pardon me, this r is the radius of convergence and the interval over which the series converges is called the interval of convergence. So you might well ask, what happens with this? Because by the end of tomorrow's lesson, you're going to know exactly every time whether your series is an option one, an option two, or an option three. The most interesting case is if you're in option one, and the question in that case is, how do we test endpoints? And so the next few lessons in our unit will be about how do we test endpoints. And so to that end, I would like to find, I would like to describe for you the nth term test. The nth term test, ooh, we're going to use that, we're going to do that in a minute. Uh, the nth term test, ooh, we're not going to do that just yet. Goodbye for now. The nth term test is a test for divergence. It is not a test for convergence. It is a test for divergence. And the nth term test says, if the sum of a series if the sum of a sequence diverges, nope, I'm going to say that again. The series sum of the a sub n's diverges if the limit of the terms is not zero. That is to say, if the terms do not get smaller and smaller and smaller until they're practically zero, then adding them up has to blow up. That's what it says. If I'm adding terms that are not settling down to zero, that summation has to blow up. That's what the series says. That's what the test says. So, playing everybody's favorite game, does it converge? Does it converge? Uh, that's our question for most of the next week and a half. I take a look at this term. And I think as n gets larger and larger, what happens to those numbers? These numbers approach infinity. And since these numbers approach infinity, I am adding together infinitely many things, each of which gets infinitely large. This thing diverges. It diverges. Second. I take a look at that term, and I ask myself, what happens as n gets infinitely large? Well, as n gets infinitely large, these terms get closer and closer to one half. So I'm adding together infinitely many things, and those infinitely many things are basically one half. So a half plus 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 a half infinitely many times, this thing diverges because I'm adding infinitely many one-halves. This guy. These terms, as n gets larger and larger, these terms get closer and closer to zero. So the question is, does the series converge? And the answer is maybe. 
because, my friends, the nth term test is a test for divergence, not a test for convergence. It is a test for divergence, not a test for convergence. If the nth term does not approach zero, then the series diverges. I'll give you two examples. This is a series whose nth term gets closer and closer to zero. This is a series whose nth term gets closer and closer to zero. However, this series diverges and this series converges. And that's not going to make any sense just yet. How can I add infinitely many zeros and have it blow up? If I add up infinitely many zeros, shouldn't I at least get some fixed number? And the answer is, it depends on how zero-y your terms are. The zeros on the left are not as small as the zeros on the right. That's going to blow your mind. It's just going to blow your mind. So the big things to take away from this lesson are twofold. One, we are going to analyze power series going forward. We are going to analyze power series in such a way that we'll know if they converge on a finite interval or an infinite interval. And if it converges on a finite interval, I need to check endpoints, and we are beginning to build an arsenal as to what happens at endpoints. Nth term test is the first tool in that toolbox. Those are the things I leave you with. I will see you tomorrow.